The oceans cover two-thirds of our planet and are home to 80% of life on Earth and lots of amazing animals. 3.5 billion years ago, our planet came alive when life evolved in the ocean. Bony fish evolved 430 million years ago and diversified quickly. There are now at least 30,000 different species of fish. Sailfish are some of the most highly evolved. They're only five million years old, but they're intelligent, and they coordinate attacks with each other by flashing colors on the sides of their bodies. Their swords evolved so they could injure or isolate fish from the school. They're also some of the fastest fish in the sea. Sharks proliferated in every ocean and have been the dominant predator ever since, controlling life on reefs and shaping evolution. They've survived five major extinctions that have wiped most life off the planet. But sharks are being wiped out for shark fin soup, a Chinese delicacy. Their populations have dropped 90% because shark fins are worth $400 a pound. This fishing port landed more than 5,000 sharks in a single day, and they're being hunted in every country with a coastline, destroying the framework for life in the oceans. The overfishing is partly due to the industrial fishing practices we employ today, but also it's due to the demand for shark fin. In the last 10 or 15 years, the demand for shark fin soup has spread from places like Hong Kong and Singapore to Taiwan, and then now to mainland China. We believe now uh, fins from up to 73 million sharks a year are being used for shark fin soup. Well, I think the, perhaps the, the saddest irony of all is that sharks, probably one of nature's most successful species, they've been on the planet around 400 million years. I don't think there's any large animal that's been around that long. And yet I really do believe if we don't do something very soon, we could lose entire species in our lifetime. It's that close. And I think in some of these cases, you get to a point where the population is so low, it just can't reproduce and it just collapses. And we're pretty close to that. What we're seeing happen to sharks is happening to many other species. They're at the top of the food chain. They reproduce slowly. So unfortunately, they may be amongst the first victims, but they're indicative of what's happening in our oceans, which is a, a wanton disregard for populations, for, for dynamics, the bycatch that they're involved in, where they're caught in other fisheries, the, the total waste that's going on. And this is a precious resource, and theoretically it's renewable, but not if we do it the way we're doing it right now. Fish are the main protein source for a third of us humans, but we're wiping them out. Every year, we discard as much as 40 billion pounds of dead fish as bycatch because it wasn't the species we were targeting. We're slicing off the top of the food web by overfishing, which is a global problem that has really accelerated dramatically over the last 50 years with the industrialization of global fisheries. Today, there's really no place on the planet anymore that's not impacted by the effects of fishing. Many animals, most animals swimming around in the surface waters are interested in, in the, those baited hooks, so take the hooks and subsequently get caught, and they may or may not be what the fishermen are looking for, or, and things like leatherback turtles or some marine mammals can simply get entangled in that, uh, in that line of gear. There are more selective ways of fishing. There's a lot of, lot of waste that goes on out there. We have comprehensively studied the decline and depletion of large predator populations, sharks, tuna and billfish, large ground fish such as cod and halibut, even whales, pinnipeds, manatees, you know, everything there, large predators in the ocean in general. What we found, looking at the results of 250 records from over 100 studies, that large predator populations on average had declined nearly 90%. We predicted that if this trend of species collapse through fisheries and overfishing would continue, we could run out of seafood supply in the year 2048. There is this perception that 
if not our population but our consumption can grow and grow and grow in some way um, into the indefinite future. And clearly we're already exhausting the capacity of the planet to provide for us. The human population has been increasing and increasing. They're now saying over 10 billion. So you've got more people chasing fewer and fewer resources. In all of our studies of world fisheries, we've seen this continuous uh, trend of collapse of fish stocks. No matter how you slice or dice the data, uh, with every year there's a higher proportion of fish stocks collapsed. To us, this uh, showed that there would be a point in the future where we could run out of seafood if this trend was to continue. The ocean is not limitless. The ocean is a very fragile place that has already been compromised. We have to accept that the ocean is changing very rapidly. If we continue to increase carbon dioxide level, the ocean will become more acidic, less oxygenated, lower in phytoplankton. There will simply be less life in the ocean to support the fundamental ecosystem processes that have been going on for millions of years. Um, if we want to stop that, I think we have to address overfishing, uh, ocean pollution and climate change simultaneously. What gives me the greatest amount of hope, honestly, is that I see that more and more people are concerned about this. Um, there's a huge tide of interest in the ocean and in ocean conservation that wasn't there uh, 10 or 15 years ago. A lot of people are aware that their personal choices of what fish they eat, uh, which kind of uh, fisheries they support, what they throw into the garbage, which ends up in the, in the ocean at some point. And to me, that growing awareness and that um, uh, mindfulness is increasing very rapidly, particularly among younger people. My name is Kathy Pagabler and I am a teacher at San Vicente Elementary School here in Saipan. I showed them your documentary and it moved them and they got really interested and that's how it all started. What we wanted to do was brainstorm ideas and what to do after this and then um, they wrote a letter. They wanted the governor to hear their voices. Dear Governor Fitzgerald, I am a sixth grade student of Nassau Vicente Elementary School. I am writing this letter because the sharks are almost extinct. I hope you sign a bill to ban shark finny. It makes me feel so good because I'm, we're so young, but we accomplished a lot of things, big things. I don't think we've done this before, and like, it's a huge step. Maybe the world might not end because of what we're doing and look at us we're kids and we're actually trying to save stuff while you guys do something else worry about yourselves instead of other people